Excuse me, but this is an emergency. Yes, sir? What city is that over there? That's New York, sir. Yikes, I did it again. Is something wrong, sir? I'll be fine. Oh, no. My family's in Florida, and I'm in New York. My family's in Florida. I'm in New York. Get ready to learn English with one of the best Christmas movies of all time, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Now, before we jump into the lesson, I want to let you know that every week we help you to understand movies and TV series without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. Just like Alexandros from Athens, whose family have told him he speaks with a New York accent and recommends you definitely, definitely start watching this channel because it's the best channel for learning English. So make sure you subscribe now by hitting the button and bell down below. That way you'll never miss a single lesson. Yep, one quick score. We get ourselves a couple of phony passports, and we hightail it to some foreign country. Arizona? These two use a lot of slang. Score can mean quite a few different things. Coming from these guys and the shenanigans, dishonest activities they're known for committing, it's relatively easy to tell that what they mean is a robbery. So their plan is to make a robbery and then, as he says, get a pair of phony passports. If you describe something as phony, you mean it is false or fake, not real. We've become bored with watching actors give us phony emotions. We're tired of pyrotechnics and special effects. While the world he inhabits is in some respects counterfeit, there's nothing fake about Truman himself. After that, they plan to hightail it to another country, meaning leave the country quickly. Be gone, demon fish! Adios! Andiamo! That's right! Boo-hoo! You hightail it back to your mama! How did he do that? Don't make me come in the water! Arizona? You can safely say Marv isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. This is an idiom to say he's unintelligent. Arizona is not a country, it's a state in the United States. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. Very smart, Marv. You bust out of jail to rob 14 cents from a Santa Claus? Every little bit helps. Besides, now we got our new nickname. We're the Sticky Bandits. Real cute. Very cute. Huh? By bust out of jail, he means they escaped from prison. Generally, bust has the opposite meaning. That is, if a criminal is busted, it means they're caught by the police. And if regular, non-criminal person is busted, it means they're caught doing something they're not supposed to be doing or something you're embarrassed about. How are your sales doing? How are my sales doing? Busted. <laughs> you know, my numbers are down a little bit. And it's because of the economy. Every little bit helps. Besides, now we got our new nickname. We use besides to add another reason for something. But why, why am I even discussing this with you? You don't have any magic. Ha! Stick that on your Facebook page and lick it. Like it, like it, whatever. Besides, I still have plenty enough essence left to carry out my delightfully diabolical plan. We're the Sticky Bandits. As you can see, he's wearing a type of sticky glove. If something is sticky, things get attached to it. A bandit is someone who robs people, especially one of a group of people who attack travellers. What's the matter? I thought I 
saw something. I think she likes me. If you say it serves someone right when something unpleasant happens to them, you mean that it's their own fault and you have no sympathy for them. Another way we might mean the same is with the phrase, that's what you get. Careful, careful. You stupid fish. Actually, it's a cephalopod. <laughs> I got a gun in my pocket. You open your mouth and you'll be spitting gum out through your forehead. Oh! Can you now guess what he says next if we don't show you the subtitles? I got a gun in my pocket. What did he say? I got a gun in my pocket. I've got a gun in my pocket. I'll put a gun in my pocket. I have some gum in my pocket. I got a gun in my pocket. I got a gun in my pocket. Most times you'll hear native English speakers contract, have got to, to, gotta. Yeah. I've got a question here about a toothbrush. Hear it one more time and then during the pause, practice saying it like him. I got a gun in my pocket. Sonny! Yes? Nothing would thrill me more greatly than to shoot you. Knocking off a youngster ain't gonna mean all that much to me. Understand? Mm -hmm. But since we're in a hurry, I'll make a deal with you. You throw down your camera, and we won't hurt you. You promise? I cross my heart and hope to die. Okay. Nothing would thrill me more greatly than to shoot you. If something thrills you, it makes you feel happy and excited. <laughs> so, Chadley, your parents must have been thrilled when you told them you were engaged. You guys are getting married tomorrow, and, and I couldn't be more thrilled for both of you. We often use this word in its noun form as well. Example, winning first place must have been quite a thrill. Also, he says, nothing would thrill me more, which is a bit of a fixed expression, only it's more common to hear, nothing would make me happier. Why just some of it? Do the whole thing. Yes, nothing would make me happier. Knocking off a youngster ain't gonna mean all that much to me. Understand? Mm -hmm. Knock off is a slang expression that means to kill. It can also mean to steal, which is how Harry used it in this clip. That's brilliant, Harry. Brilliant. <laughs> yep, there's nobody dumb enough to knock off a toy store on Christmas Eve. The word youngster is a bit old fashioned today, but it means child or young person. But since we're in a hurry, I'll make a deal with you. You throw down your camera and we won't hurt you. A deal is an agreement or arrangement that helps the two people or group of people involved. The deal he wants to make with Kevin is that he gives them the camera and in return, they won't hurt him. I know, I'm sorry. Look, I'll make a deal with you, okay? Hmm. For every night that you're asleep before I get home from work, yeah. I will wake you up in a way that has proved very popular in the past. There's an interesting feature of connected speech in how he says two things in this clip. I'll make a deal with you and we won't hurt you. You'll hear native English speakers often change the y sound for a ch sound when it is after a t or a th. However, this is also a prevalent feature of the New York accent of the bad guys in the movie. You'll never hear from us again, okay? You promise? 
I cross my heart and hope to die. This is an expression used to say that you promise that you will do something or that what you are saying is true. Adam Levine sings this in the chorus of this song. So I cross my heart and I hope to die Then I'll only stay with you one more night And I know I said it a million times But I'll only stay with you one more night Okay kid, give it to me Okay, kid. You want to throw bricks? Go ahead, throw another one. You got any more? Come on, Marv, get up. You don't have any more bricks. He's out of it. Did you notice here he says don't instead of doesn't? While definitely amusing and colourful characters, they do not stand out for their proper use of English. They speak more of what we would call street English and this is also apparent in their use of ain't instead of isn't in this clip. Knocking off a youngster ain't gonna mean all that much to me. Understand? Mm -hmm. Or here. This ain't like the last time. This ain't his house. The kid's running scared. He ain't got a plan. Um, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That did it! Nobody throws bricks at me and gets away with it! Come on, Marv, get up! You go this way, I'm going around the back! That did it! Nobody throws bricks at me and gets away with it! If someone gets away with something they did, they're not caught or punished when they've done something wrong. You'll never get away with this! Rocco's gonna kill you, whoever you are! One quick score. We get ourselves a couple of phony passports. And we hightail it to some foreign country. Arizona? Can you remember the expression I used humorously to say Marv isn't so smart? Isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer? Isn't the sharpest tool in the shed? Isn't the sharpest tool in the box? I said option B, but the other two options are also correct. That's very smart, Marv. You bust out of jail to rob 14 cents from a Santa Claus? Every little bit helps. Besides, now we got our new nickname. We're the Sticky Bandits. Real cute. I got a gun in my pocket. You open your mouth and you'll be spitting gum out through your forehead. If something thrills you, it makes you feel excited, bored, scared. Knocking off a youngster ain't gonna mean all that much to me. Understand? Mm -hmm. But since we're in a hurry, I'll make a deal with you. You throw down your camera and we won't hurt you. You promise? I cross my heart and hope to die. Okay. Direct it. Okay, kid. You want to throw bricks? Go ahead, throw another one. 
You got any more? Come on, Marv, get up. You don't have any more bricks. He's out of it. We came back in. Wow. We came back in. That did it. Nobody throws bricks at me and gets away with it. Come on, Marv, get up. You go this way. I'm going around the back. Now, if you love Christmas as much as I do and are looking for some recommendations of which movies to watch during this holiday season, I highly recommend you check out this lesson we made with the top 10 Christmas movies of all time. Let's take a look at that now. Hey everyone, in today's lesson we are counting down my top 10 Christmas movies of all time. Now, I absolutely love Christmas, I love the decorations, the traditions, spending time with family and especially the movies. So I'm very excited to share these ones with you today. <laughs> 